my uncle uh, had this sports marketing company in New York City. And so in the summers, I would go and work there. And it was, you know, again, even that, which sounds kind of fun, was a little bit like mind numbing for me. <laughs> but one of the guys who worked there uh, used to be an NBC uh, executive. And he said, you know, if maybe next year you'd want to think about doing an internship at Saturday Night Live, like I know some of the people over there. And I said, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think he was just able to get my resume kind of at the top of a, of a certain pile over there. So I was able to get a job interning at Saturday Night Live while I was still in college. That's, and, that's awesome. Yeah. And that was obviously just a dream. What, what year was that? That was OK. So that was 94, 95. Okay. So that so, that was that was like uh, Jim Brewer was on during that time. Well, and... it was right before that. Right so before my, that, okay. my first year as an intern was the very last year of like uh, Chris Farley and okay. David Spade. Oh man, like it was the that very, kind of golden age. Yeah, yeah, very end of that. And then I was able to turn that from an internship to become writer's assistant there full time when I graduated college, and that was the Jim Brewer, Will Ferrell, Chris Kattan turnover year um so at that point i was like well you know i have to i want to be i want to do this because i watched the writers there and i'm like this is the life i want to live I was were you doing so any... miserable like, doing the writing rooms <laughs> <laughs> well it was it was a relatable kind of misery yeah, and also enough. it was it was misery with free food so i can <laughs> you know i'm down for that so what uh were you doing any writing at that time as a writer's assistant you know, I wasn't really, not not very much at all. I kind of think that you, what they had me do, um, it, because you had a lot to do, like, so you didn't have that much free time. And I was just kind of caught up in the world of like, I can't believe I'm at Saturday Night Live and I get to go to <laughs> parties and I can, you know, I see the host is right in front of me and there's like, oh my God, Jim Carrey's in the room with me. Um, but what they let me do that year, which was very cool and is still probably of anything that I've ever written, it was probably seen by the most people was, I don't know if you remember, you might be too young, but on Thursday nights when NBC like ruled Thursday night and they had Seinfeld and, you know, friends and all that shit, they used to have a promo for Saturday Night Live during their Thursday night lineup that was like, you know, it was sort of like, hey, I'm David Schwimmer and I'll be hosting Saturday Night Live this weekend with the special musical guest live. And then there'd be like one little joke, like they would just <laughs> say. And so they used to let me write those things that were like 15 <laughs> seconds long. Um, and I saw that as like, oh, McKay, they're good. They're they're letting me write these like soon. I'm going to be on staff there. Then, of course, I got <laughs> fired. But I knew that I had to be like a comedy writer. Like that was, that was what I wanted to do. So what, what, um, what happened that, uh, that, that led to you getting fired? Oh God, this story. <laughs> so uh, basically what happened was, uh, well, first of all, let me preface this. Cause I I've told the story a lot, but I'll preface it by saying I was not a good writer's assistant. <laughs> I, was not, uh, I was not thorough. I was not, uh, you know, detail oriented. I was none of those things, but this was back in the day when being a writer's assistant there was not really about like sitting in a room and typing everything down frantically. It was more about organizing dinner. Like it, <laughs> it just, it changed over the years because the writers would go off and write themselves and you know, they'd write in pads. It wasn't even, they had computers but people weren't even really using them. So I was kind of like a glorified, like, you know, dinner lunch master. Um, and, but I thought like, fine, I don't mind doing that. If it's going to be like, if I'll get a job as a writer here in a couple of years, I can do that. Uh, it turns out, uh, you remember Regis Philbin of live with Regis and Kathy. Yeah. So his daughter, who's, I guess, a, a, maybe a year or two younger than me, uh, went on like Regis is like my daughter, JJ's on the, come here, JJ. And like, she came <laughs> on the show and she's like, JJ, talk to the camera. What do you have to say? And JJ was like, Lauren Michaels, I really want a job at Saturday Night Live. Will you please hire me? So they fired me and hired her in that job. 
So for years, even though my <laughs> career was going great, I spent being very angry at uh, Regis Philbin's daughter. And then I met her at a party and she was like perfectly lovely and she had no idea what I was talking about. So I, was, <laughs> I looked like an idiot again. But uh, yeah, so that's basically what happened because it's very hard to get fired from Saturday Night Live. Like oh, yeah. there, there are people who've worked there. Uh, there's a, there, there was a sound engineer there who was on crack burned his office to the ground with a crack pipe when he fell asleep was not fired not fired nothing oh you know like they put the 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 office out they sent him away for a week he came back had his job but me it was like jj philbin wants a job so we got to get rid of you um that's kind of how that went oh, man. <laughs> so it wasn't the greatest start to my career but at least i got a little time at snl Come join the conversation, the show that you've been wanting. Keep it real with no filter. Weekly we share discussions, WWSD. Interviewing creative guests, talking the creative process and sharing all the influences from TV and film. Emmy nominated and winning, yeah, they coming through. Actors and comedians too, directors and writers, we're more than a few. Masters of their craft, yes, tune in, you gotta see. This the podcast that you need, WWSD.